Well, hello, Crime Stuffers. I don't even know where to begin today. I'm going to jump on the Benghazi bag wagon. Uh, Japan, major problems there. Uh, between Fukushima becoming a net importer, between shutting down all their power plants, their bond bubble, their aging population, the fact that the GDP to debt ratio is 200%. Japan is going to be the first one to go down. I've seen it uh, now repeatedly. Do, lots of analysts and just guys that aren't politically motivated and they're just like, you know, money guys that they talk about moving their money and how to protect assets and wealth and so forth. They are saying that, uh, oh, it's so hot, my shirt is basically sticking to me. In Hawaii, we're not having snowfall. There's another bullshit story. How does that? People in Niagara, over the weekend, people in Minnesota and Wisconsin and Niagara Falls had snow. It's basically summer in Hawaii. Uh, what happened to the rest of the nation? No, oh, well, could it be that there were uh, volcanoes that put a lot of particulate matter in the north? Remember that? Iceland? Remember that whole thing? And now it's up there and reflecting the sunlight and it's gotten cooler, not warmer. We're, and it's a little bit of a trend uh, down in our uptrend because we were having an uptrend. There's no question about that. Caused by the sun, not by men making carbon dioxide, you fools. Anyway, so Japan, big problem, big, big problem. When that domino falls, we are going to have, uh, oh, it's going to be terrible. And it's just going to be terrible. It's just going to be terrible. Okay, end of video. Anyway, so uh, the point being, though, is that when Japan falls, it's going to get messy in the United States. And when the United States falls, and when that whole thing unwraps, and this whole thing unwinds, and we, that's, it's going to be messy, 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 messy. And you might want to watch from a distance, is what several people are saying. Because if you're in the middle of the mess, and again, damn it, it's not going to be the end of the world. People will still want to eat and have power and, you know, they have lights on at night and have shoes on their feet and be able to go to the market and buy stuff and sell their stuff. Because people are still going to have stuff to sell, right? The bankers have you mind-fucked into thinking that, oh, if their currency fails, everything ends. No, that's not the case. Their currency is going to fail, though. And then here we have this whole thing where they've been friggin' every freaking thing. They've been rigging every. They rig drugs. They rig the whole. They rig every. But not football. Football is sacrosanct. Uh, it's the price of drugs. The price of prostitutes. The price of anything. They're rigging everything. LIBOR scandals. They're whatever they can make money on commodities, gold and silver. They're rigging right. The price of commodities. The the whatever interest rates, mortgage, whatever they can make money. Whatever they can do to rig and cheat and make money, uh, they will. And they have. And they've been proven to do it over and over again. But they're too big to jail and we can't do anything about it. And, they, you know, just let them go. Because if we do anything about it, they, you know, the economy might, the world economy might crash. Sure. And, and we've been seeing the most outrageous. These guys have been getting away with laundering drug money. Busted. Stone cold busted laundering drug money. The bankers go scot-free. You got five, six fatties in your pocket, though, and you're going to go away for 10 years and you're going to make you know, equipment for the military and the military industrial complex because Jim Crow is alive and well in the United States, except now it doesn't matter if you're black. Probably you'll get it worse if you're black, but they get the white folk and the, and the Mexicans and whoever else they can, too. Okay. Anybody that can't afford good console to get them off. So, which is most people. So, the... Uh, Price rigging and all that stuff, bring, bringing gold and silver down to where it is now. Look how far down they've got it. Yay! This is a good thing. You want this. Buy silver and gold down here. doesn't matter if they're going to take it lower. And see, I don't believe that we're going to have one dip and then it's going to go back up again. No, I doubt it very severely, actually. I think what's going to happen is it's going to bounce around down here all through the summer. And then around fall, like it always does, it will start going back up in price. And they may lose control of it this time. But I don't think we're quite there yet. Next year, the year after, maybe... But I don't think we're quite to the point where they absolutely lose control of it and it gets up to, you know, 100 bucks or 500 bucks or 600 bucks. I, 100 bucks it could do, though, in the, in the next little while. In the next seven years, it will be multiples of where it is now. But, uh, you know, just like back seven years ago when I was saying that, it was, you know, silver was five bucks and you, everybody should be buying that. Nobody listened. Now it's, you know, now it's down to about five times what it was. It will be back up to seven, eight, nine times what it was. It was back up there for a while in the 40s at least eight times, right? So just understand that it, in the next seven to 10 years, it will be at least eight times from where it is now. <laughs> and that's, and probably we don't have that long because I don't think they can keep this plates, plates, plates spinning for another eight years. Okay, Benghazi. Six ambassadors in the history of the United States have been killed while on duty. These guys lied from get-go, day one, from the very outset, that it was a YouTube video. It doesn't matter that the, these guys told us that they were gonna 
agitate for the release of the blind shake on the anniversary of uh, September 11th, and that there was going to be a widespread unrest. And they, I mean, they tried. They Al Jazeera, everybody, they took, informed everybody they could. They practically freaking sent out press releases to let people know that there was going to be some uprisings and unrest. And these guys got guns and and you know AKs and and RPGs and stuff like that. So it wasn't like it was going to be uh, you know just people with signs going boo. We don't like the USA. So should they have beefed up? Uh, you know, some security at the U.S. consulates around the world, and especially in the Arab world, it seems to me there should have been. And for them to come out and start lying about, oh, it's a YouTube video, the bullshit from the I called bullshit, most people called bullshit on that from day one. That there's no way that it was just some YouTube video. It's nonsense. It's been proven to be a lie. So what was the truth? Maybe there needs to be some investigation because we don't know what the truth is. People are talking about, you know, that the Stevens was a, was a uh, gun runner to... That's how the weapons are getting into Syria. Could be. How about some investigation into that? Um, even if that wasn't the case, why is it that this guy's, uh, these guys were left with their asses hanging in the wind and nobody came to save them or nobody came to even... They didn't even send anybody. How come? Mm -hmm. Could it be? I mean, there's stories that, oh, well, Obama wanted to look good and he was going to stage a kidnapping and then he was going to negotiate the release and he was going to look like the hero and then he was going to get be a shoe-in for re-election and then it all went wrong. That could be a complete bullshit conspiracy theory, or it could be partially true, or what? We need some investigation. Who did what when? Bottom line, why didn't they send some aid? Why didn't this guy get pulled out? Why wasn't there more security after they'd been asked numerous times that they needed more security there? They try to blame the Republicans. Oh, the Republicans' budget cuts. It was about money. We didn't have enough. No. Security, well, there were plenty of assets in the area. And there were plenty of, there was plenty of resources, as they said, that could have beefed up security for Stevens. But it wasn't forthcoming. How come? Maybe we need some investigation, not just from Republicans and not just who are, you know, obviously in there for political gain, but, uh, but still, as one guy pointed out, if Republicans say 2 plus 2 is 4, it doesn't mean they're wrong. They may be saying that 2 plus 2 is 4 because they want to get Hillary, <laughs> but still, 2 plus 2 is 4. And the, and the idea being that, you know, the, the Democrats should be all over this also, get to the bottom of it, because we cannot have our ambassadors, we cannot have our consulates in harm's way, in, you know, being attacked and these guys getting away with it. Because that will embolden people elsewhere, and then it, it, and then the diplomatic process is even more threatened. And there's 105 other reasons why we should investigate and get to the bottom of this. But the bottom line is, they were on TV, on the mainstream media, bullshitting us about this story that it was uh, some YouTube video, and you know that those Muslims get upset when you make fun of their prophet or make fun of their religion. So of course they, it was a spontaneous rebellion after somebody saw a YouTube video. Nonsense. Complete nonsense. So what was the story? We need to investigate. Bottom line. Okay. And we need to find out what happened and why. And people, some people need to take responsibility and there needs to be some accountability in our damn government for a change. That's not going to happen. I don't believe that's going to happen for a minute. Do you? If we couldn't get Bush for 9-11, we couldn't get Bush for, for freaking torture and God, starting two wars based on lies... I don't see how we're going to get Obama out of office for Benghazi. You know, I mean, just, just way here, thanks. Okay, so, uh, and if they do, I'm going to be a little annoyed because, oh, sure, get the nigger, but don't, don't, you know, these other guys can get away with all this other stuff. Sure. Oh, and a woman, too, don't forget. Hillary Clinton's female, and we'll always go after that. Doesn't mean I'm for them, doesn't mean I'm on their side, I'm just saying, right? That, oh, it's the woman, oh, it's the black guy. And now, finally, they take notice and stand up and start having to do something about it. And then further, what is this? This the, the toilet, right? Isn't the toilet the toilet the Al Qaeda, the Al Qaeda? You say Al Qaeda, I say Al Qaeda. You say Al Qaeda, I say Al Qaeda. Whatever, potato, potato, whatever. The bottom line is, we know that this is a front that we made up, and and Osama bin Laden was a big part of it, and and so forth. The, the story. Ooh, we need to touch your testicles now in the airports because of Al Qaeda. You need to take your shoes off because of Al Qaeda. Fourth Amendment doesn't apply because of Al Qaeda. You're not secure in your person or paper or things as long as you're trying to travel because of Al Qaeda. Uh, we've got all this homeland security because of Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. Al Qaeda. But now in Syria. We are funding those guys. We are getting them drug, well, not drugs. Well, maybe we're getting them drugs so they can sell the drugs to turn them into guns because heroin is a, is a currency that's as good as gold or silver, but that's beside the point. That's that whole thing about Afghanistan. We won't talk about that. But the idea that perhaps Stevens was running guns is a pretty good theory because it certainly wouldn't be the first time, would it? 
So we have uh, our, these guys running guns to our sworn enemies. Weren't we fighting Al-Qaeda in Iraq? Weren't we fighting, aren't we still fighting Al-Qaeda? Or supposedly guys that are loyal to Al-Qaeda in Afghanistan and other places in Africa and so forth? Aren't we like doing drones against Al-Qaeda, right? Aren't we drug bombing the children get in the way? But no, we got one Al-Qaeda guy. So it was worth the 27 women and children and the wedding party. Okay. It should be of slight concern, it seems, to most Americans that we would be funding Al-Qaeda in Syria. Further, it should be of greater concern that uh, Russia and China both said, we won't stand for another Libya, and there could be a big, big war. And the bankers would love that. They couldn't count their money fast enough if they could fund a big war like that. Right? They'd make all kinds of money. Now, in uh, Syria, Syria is one of the, Syria and Iran are two uh, free states that still uh, produce oil. Uh, that China and Russia can get its hands on. And China and Russia, neither one of them smart enough to do, you know, wide-scale uh, Tesla technology or converting water into fuel, you know, it's H2O, two parts hydrogen, or whatever, you know, alternative energy. So they still like their oil just like everybody else. So they would not want uh, us to have control of Syria. And they're not too happy about Libya either. But Libya and, and uh, Saddam Hussein in Iraq and Gaddafi in Libya, those were both guys that were against the Muslim fundamentalists because they were secular. No matter what they try to tell you, that they were basically on our side, or you know, maybe not our, on our side, but on the same side of things when it came to be uh, fighting against these uh, you know, fanatical fundamentalist Muslims who are now in control in a lot of places because of us, that we set those guys up. And as soon as we knocked down... Uh, Gaddafi and get rid of the gold dinar it was about dollar hegemony. I told you hegemony. I told you this numerous times. Other people have told you this. And then we set up a central bank instantaneously. All right. So now we got these guys. They're still not very pleased with the United States, and they know that we're trying to get uh, doing arms deals and so forth. And it looks like an arms deal went uh, went awry, went south there. And uh, but do we know? Do I have you know definitive proof? No. Does anybody? No. Does there need to be investigation? Yes. And is the Obama administration and Hillary under some severe pressure right now? Which is why they say threat level high for another false flag. Why? Because, boom, oh, look over there. Oh, look, a squirrel. Oh, look, a bomb. Oh, look, a, a, a pipe cleaner went up. Or a pipe cleaner. <laughs> a pipe bomb went up. Or a, or, or a pressure cooker or something went off. Oh, no. We need to investigate. And see, they don't care about distracting us. They're not trying to distract you and me. They're not trying to distract the, the, the actual uh, alternative media that sees right through these false flag bullshit events. They just need to false. They just need to get the attention uh, of the 535 guys in Washington, maybe six or 700 guys in Washington, and a few of the state legislatures, and say, "You must do something about this. How can you think about Benghazi at a time like this?" As I make this, nothing is blown up. However, there are lots of people saying that something could blow up very shortly, and it should be very. You should be very cautious and think that perhaps your first thought will be it's a false flag to take away the pressure and the heat of Benghazi. Uh, that's about all I got. So the uh, bottom line, though, here, guys, is that uh, e pluribus unum. We need to understand that this corporation of the United States is contracting and screwing us with the uh, currency and this debt-based system, and that the new system needs to be uh, not debt-based, needs to be sustainable, needs to promote liberty and prosperity and creativity among the populace, not this enslaving with debt thing that they've got going on now. And enough people need to understand the difference between the two systems and that there can be a system that is sound money and that does promote prosperity, unlike the system that we have now. And when they try, they have usurped our government perfectly. Many people have figured this out, that if you understand sovereignty and your liberty and so forth, you ain't got no government. It does, there's not in place. Everybody's in the federal zone. Everybody's in that federal government. Everybody, right? You need a license. <laughs> right for your damn dog to get married to do anything why you need a license read your history okay but by statute the actually still the courts still rule in the favor of people that actually bring their cases to courts that you cannot have your rights diminished by statute i'll have more on that later but the idea is very simple that people need to wake up and educate each other educate self educate others you know even when it comes down to food every dollar you spend everything that you spend is with the idea of freedom and liberty in mind, of voluntarism in mind. You don't support corporations and monopolies. You don't support these guys, right? Just if we, if everybody would quit supporting our oppressors with bank accounts in their bank, 
rank, making money for them, well, things would change very rapidly. But people haven't woken up in large numbers. They're starting to wake up. They're starting to figure, hey, wait a minute. These guys in CNN and ABC and CBS and Fox News, they're married or have brothers and sisters that work in the White House or work on Wall Street or, or bankers or, right? We're not getting real news. Yay, people are starting to wake up about that. People are starting to realize that the mainstream media news is basically what they want you to hear, which is why we're not hearing more about Benghazi, because the White House and the CIA own the media. Okay, well, more the CIA than the White House. The White House, whoever happens to be in at the moment, is the guys that, you know, they're the people that uh, control what's going on, but more so the CIA and so forth than, say, the president, because that media can be turned on him as soon as that puppet is of new use, or, or as soon as that puppet becomes a liability, that's when things turn. So far, the puppet is very good, very, been very, very good to them. So I don't think they're going to be trying to get rid of him anytime soon unless huge amounts of pressure come on. And if it gets too hot, I think they, they will run another false flag. That that's, seems to be. And isn't that sad and depressing that this is the way it goes? Actually not, because if the stories about Boston are true, then I always look on the bright side of life. Because they're doing, you know, they're, it's a kinder, gentler dictatorship where they actually are having actors instead of killing innocent humans. So, you know, there's that. Anyway. <laughs> uh, e pluribus unum. That's all I got.